good afternoon to one and all once again today we'll start with a new chapter of practical that is staining of bacteria so in this class or you can say in today's class about 45 minute so how we will proceed that first i will brief you about the unit of length that will followed by the basic chemistry of stain or you can say dye it will be followed by classification then important procedures for some staining methods and at the last i will touch, touch up to the special staining method and some other staining that is utilized in other department so let me start with the first that is unit of length i had highlighted intentionally because you should uh, clarify you should have clear idea about the conversion of this unit for example if we are telling that bacteria are measured in micron then you should know that 1 micron is equivalent to 10 to the power minus 6 meter so similarly if i will tell that size of virus is were measured in nanometer then you should have idea that it is 10 to the power 9 my, sorry minus 9 meter so this conversion should be known to you this acronym should be known to you and many time in exam question may ask that the size of virus measure in dash unit then you should know that it is in nanometer so with this background you can say that the size among microorganism if you want to see then the largest one you can consider protozoa that is 100 micrometer and the smallest that is viruses that is in nanometer so in between you will get the yeast bacteria rickettsia chlamydia and they are of variable size why i am highlighting this particular point because size of microorganism is important when we are observing the stain slide if we are going to observe in my previous class also in microscope class also i had told that microscope has some limitation in magnification so magnification some microscope can magnify up to micro micrometer so if your microscope has micrometer magnification then you cannot see in the viruses in that microscope and i had correctly said that for observing the viruses we required electron microscope so <clears throat> that's why you should know you should have sort of rough idea that protozoa is largest followed by bacteria rickettsia and viruses are considered as the smallest one so i hope this uh, unit of length is clear to everyone okay now moving to the next that why we need to stain the bacteria a question will come that why we need to stain the bacteria so even though without staining we can see for example there is a unstained smear we can see the unstained smear so unstained smear generally we are performing wet mount or hanging drop method where we can put the drop of culture and we are going for observation but that unstained smear that required special microscope like dark field bright field or phase contrast or some other modified microscope and that is generally used to observe the living organism that is generally used to observe the living organism and third if you want to see the motility of any organism or cell division or some uh, living uh, living procedure you have to observe then only you can go for unstained smear but why stained smear is required the importance of stained smear is the bacteria are generally colorless they are transparent and they are smaller so transparent and smaller that makes difficult to view that particular bacteria without staining so in such cases if we can increase the contrast that's better but we have some limitation that's why what we are doing we are fixing that bacteria and we are trying to stain them stain them means we can in layman language we can say that we are painting the bacteria so that we can easily differentiate the bacteria that this is a particular group of bacteria whereas this particular color are of different type of bacteria generally this stained smear provide the contrast and because of this contrast we can easily find out and easily study the various structures of bacteria and second important aspect of staining smear that is it helps us in classification of bacteria how because after staining it will be easy to know the morphology like shape size their arrangement and based on shape size arrangement and other morphological parameter we can categorize the uh, bacteria in different groups that we will see in coming slide 
but in general if you want to stain the smear then there are three different steps first that we require to prepare the smear the smear may be prepared from the broth from the colony from the tissue whatever material you have appropriate procedure you have to follow we have to prepare the thin smear thin smear because that will easy to pass that will allow light to pass very easily and it gives the better resolution and better picture in the microscope that must be followed by fixing and after fixing this slide we can go for actual staining procedure now the fixing is important i am highlighting here fixing is important because fixing that help us in two three ways for example if you will fix the slide then that will attach bacteria to that particular slide so that will not get wash out in subsequent step because subsequent steps in staining that required frequent washing so if we are not fixing by by fixing we are affixing the bacteria to the slide so that it will not get wash out the second important advantage of fixing that it improve the staining because after fixing the pores get bigger and the slide or the bacteria get more permeable to stain and that will give little bit intense contrast or intense staining to the bacteria and the last and most important is last and most important benefit of fixing that is that helps to kill the pathogenic microbes so if you are handling pathogenic microbes if you had not fixed the slide then there might be chances that you will get the infection so once you will fix the slide then they get dead now they are not capable to cause the infection to handler now the question is come how we can fix this slide so there are different method of fixing this slide <coughs> sorry the most common that is physical fixing or um, physical method of fixing generally heat you have to pass the slide over the bunsen flame for two three times so that your bacteria get fixed over that particular slide and the second that is fixing by some chemical so fixing by some chemical that is generally methanol and acetone are used to fix this slide generally acetone is used to fix the slide which is used for fat staining fat means i had mentioned earlier fluorescent antibody test where we are staining this slide with fluorescent dye so that is that required acetone fixing so sometime in question in exam they may ask that chemical method or which fixative agent is used for fixing the slide okay now so you 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 should know that there are different method of fixing and their advantage how we can help us in by fixing that slide so with this background we will move to the next that is a basic chemistry of stain so before actually jumping to the staining you should know that how little bit about the chemistry of dye because dye is generally used uh, dye word is generally used in chemistry but in bacteriology or in microbiology we are using stain they are one and same there is a little bit different but we are using word stain and generally stains are principally divided in two group one that is known as acidic dye that is known as anionic chromophore that has anionic chromophore and that have net negative charge so that has net negative charge that's why generally they are staining the basic component of any cell in contrast to acidic dye the second group that is known as basic dye that have cationic chromophore and that cationic chromophore that have net positive charge so that net positive charge generally stain the acidic component of the cell for example nucleus that has acidic component so that will take the color of the basic dye for example methylene blue so your uh, nucleus will be stained with blue color so this is at anionic and cationic they are different from anode and cathode so you know that anode and cathode they have different that electric charge but here they are based on biochemistry that is their uh, ionic strength so beside this one there is one more dye that is considered as neutral dye neutral dye that their net charge is uh, neither positive nor negative so they are considered as neutral dye in general what will happen whatever dye we are using that need to be bind with bacteria in some staining whereas in some staining it must be repel to get the better visualization 
So now this depend on type of your principal dye and the type of bacteria. Generally, all the bacterial cell wall, they have net negative charge. So all the bacteria in general, you can say that the cell wall contain net negative charge. So when, when you are using the acidic dye that has negative charge, your bacterial cell wall has negative charge, they will repel. They will not the stain, but they will stain the background. In contrast to this, if you are using the basic dye that have positive charge and bacterial cell wall that has net negative charge, if you are mixing them, then that will attract and that will bind to each other and that will stain the bacteria. So this principle, it must be clear in your mind and you should know the example of acidic dye and basic dye. Then only you can easily recognize that which portion of the cell or the bacteria will take which color of the dye. Okay. Now with this background, we will move to the next, that is classification of different staining methods. So staining method principally they are classified in three important uh, important class. One that is known as simple staining. <coughs> Sorry. Second that is known as differential staining, and third that is known as spatial staining. So name itself suggesting something. Simple staining definitely it's a simple to perform, and it has a very simple procedure to perform. In contrast to this, differential staining, differential meat that will help to differentiate something from someone. So that is differential staining. And the special staining that requires something special or that staining is particularly used to observe something special uh, structure of the bacteria. So now we will see one by one along with the example. So let me start with the simple stain. So generally simple stain use a single dye or you can say generally basic dye is used to stain the bacteria. Very simple procedure is that you have to prepare the smear. You have to fix that smear. This will remain the constant for all the three types of the uh, uh, staining method. That first we have to prepare the smear followed by fixing by either physical or chemical method. After fixing, we have to add the stain. So whatever stain we are using, we have to add and we have to keep them for 30 to 60 seconds. Time is variable. That vary with uh, bacteria to bacteria and that vary with stain to stain. That will be followed by washing. Then we have to go for air drying and after air drying, we can observe under 40x and later on we can shift over to oil immersion lens. So this is a simple procedure for any simple stain and that simple stain that depends that which dye you are using. For example, if we are doing basic dye like methylene blue, then we have to put a single drop of stain on the bacteria and we have to allow them to react. And after reacting, we have to wash, air dry and we have to observe. So what will happen? Because this dye have positive charge and bacterial cell wall has negative charge. So they will attract it and that will stain the bacterial cell wall and ultimately we can observe colored bacteria under microscope. Now the second stain that is known as negative staining techniques. Negative staining techniques, this is similar to what we are seeing in Kodak film, okay, negative that uh, uh, now digital photography, we, we forget about that negative. Uh, usually we uh, try to achieve our old photography negative, that one. So here also what happens, the importance of negative is the dye is acidic that have net negative charge. And the bacterial cell wall, we know that bacterial cell wall has net negative charge. So negative negative will not allow to allow to bind. So what will happen? Your bacteria will not get stained, but your background gets stained. And that's why that is known as negative staining. Now negative staining, important thing you have to remember in exam also, they will ask which dye is generally used to perform negative staining. So India ink is generally prefer, but if India ink is not available, then we can also perform the negative staining by negrosin stain. So these are the two stain we can use to perform the negative stain. And the most important question and most confusing question generally uh, examiner ask is what type of color bacteria takes in negative staining? 
<coughs> then <coughs> it must be clear to all bacteria in negative stain they remain unstained unstained means they will not take any color of uh, your stain but we are our target is to stain the background so background gets stained but bacteria will remain unstained and with this background with contrast we are observing the bacterial morphology so this is a confusing point we have to remember that in negative stain we are not going to stain the bacteria but we are going to stain the background and because of contrast we can observe the morphology of bacteria now we will move to the next that is differential stain i had earlier mentioned the differential stain is named because it helps to differentiate one group of bacteria from other so that's why it is known as differential stain and generally more than one dye we have to use because if you want to differentiate two things then one we will uh, paint with a red the other we we may paint with a blue or some other color so that under the microscope we can easily differentiate okay blue color is this red color is this or some other color combination so that's why that required more than one dye to stain or to perform differential stain and the most common example of differential stain and you are uh, you are supposed to frequently perform this staining that is gram stain and acid fast stain so these are the <coughs> two important stain during your entire microbiology class practical class you are supposed to perform gram stain and acid fast stain so that's why i will give little bit more time to explain the procedure and principle of these two stain but in general we can see that how differential stain will be performed then the flow chart is like that okay first two step will remain the same we have to prepare the smear from starting material we have to fix the smear if you will not fix the smear if you will forget the fixing then ultimately at the end of your or during your drying you will not observe anything on your slide so again you have to start and you have to perform entire procedure so that's why fixing is important you cannot bypass the fixing now once we will fix the slide then you can add the primary stain so primary stain it is a first dye on the first time you have to add that and you have to wait for some time after that time you have to go for washing and then you can add the decolorizer so the function of decolorizer is whatever you had added has a primary stain so excess primary stain will be removed by decolorizer and after decolorizer again you have to go for washing so washing that will remove the decolorize and again you will go to add the counter stain so counter stain is the stain that will counterly stain whatever unstained by your primary stain so whatever bacteria or organism left unstained by primary stain they will get stained by counter stain or you can say whatever bacteria get decolorized or destained during this step they get stained by this counter stain so that will easy to observe under microscope because it will improve the contrast after counter stain also we have uh, to go for washing and after washing again you have to air dry and you can observe for you can go for observation of slide under 40x followed by oil immersion lens so okay. when you are doing this one who are you sir positive whatever positive uh, primary stain generally that will stain the positive organism or you can say fast organism so whenever you have some confusion you just recall that which stain you had add first and what is the color of that particular uh, what is the color of that particular stain so that is the staining of your positive organism now in contrast to this negative means those one which are stained by counter stain so negative bacteria generally take the color of the stain that is counter stain so if you are using counter stain of green color then your negative will be of green color if your primary stain is of blue color then your positive organism will be of blue color so based on your primary and counter stain you can easily recognize that what type of bacteria what colored bacteria you will observe at the end of your procedure and second thing you have to remember primary stain is always added first followed by counter stain yes yes yes, yes. it should never be reverse 
ओके अच्छा नाउ वी विल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट सम टाइम देयर इज वन एडिशनल स्टेप दैट इज नोन एज मॉर्डेंट ओके सो मॉर्डेंट द फंक्शन ऑफ मॉर्डेंट द फंक्शन ऑफ मॉर्डेंट इज दैट हेलो सर मॉडरेंट जनरली मॉडरेंट व्हाट हैपेंस मॉडरेंट जनरली वी आर एडिंग वन एडिशनल स्टेप दैट विल इंक्रीज द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ द प्राइमरी स्टेन दे आर नोन एज मॉडरेंट एंड मॉडरेंट समटाइम्स द स्टेप्स इज दैट समटाइम इट मे नॉट बी देयर इन प्रोसीजर सो एट द एंड यू कैन ऑब्जर्व द बैक्टीरिया ऑफ डिफरेंट कलर एंड दिस कलर्स डिपेंड ऑन योर प्राइमरी स्टेन और काउंटर स्टेन okay now moving to the next that is differential stain and first that is gram stain so gram stain generally it is named because or uh, it is named on name of scientists who had first time discovered or who who had first time uh, gave this procedure that is uh, hans christian gram and that will help to differentiate the bacteria in two important group that is known as gram positive and gram negative bacteria why they are gram positive and gram negative the principle that is difference on their cell wall composition so cell wall composition everyone know and sir might have covered in theory that gram positive cell wall has thick peptidoglycan layer and excessive cross linking so that will stain with a primary stain in contrast to this gram negative bacteria they have thin layer and they cannot stain with a primary stain in general if you will see the principle or procedure of gram staining the first we have to prepare the smear we have to fix the smear over the flame after fixing we have to add the primary stain here primary stain is crystal violet we have to wait for 1 minute that will followed by washing then we can go for modern step so we have to add the modern here modern is gram iodine and again you have to wait for 1 minute followed by washing then decolorization generally ethyl alcohol is used as a decolorizer in gram staining and this step particularly you have to wait for few second so that all your excess stain get removed and that will followed by counter staining step that is generally performed by safrane and that will followed by washing and air drying and observation so generally you should know which one is a principal stain which one is a mordant which one is a counter stain and their color and because of their color you can recognize that gram positive they will looks like violet color whereas gram negative they will take the they will take blue blue uh, uh, purple uh, sorry they will take the red color okay so this is a general uh, procedure of gram staining now moving to the next that how along with the step how they will uh, how they will uh, stain for example in first step all the bacteria are unstained second step whatever whether they are gram positive or gram negative they will stain with a blue that will followed by uh, iodine that is moderant so they will intensify the staining and in the next step we are going for decolorization so during decolorization color whatever gram negative cell wall bacteria having gram negative cell wall they lose that color positive they retain that color and in the following step whatever unstained they will stain with a counter stain that's why after the gram staining if you can observe the bacteria then positive will observe as a blue color and negative they will observe as a red colored bacteria so this is about the gram staining now coming to the second that is acid fast staining acid fast staining is also known as zn staining so zn staining it is named based on name of scientist that is jel nielsen scientist and that is also known as acid fast acid fast because they cannot decolorize when we are using acid alcohol as decolorizer this particular characteristic is uh, of some gram positive bacteria because their cell wall contains some special material that is known as waxy material that is known as mycolic acid it is important from your exam point of view and because of this mycolic acid content like mycobacterium they are considered as acid fast bacteria the principal uh, procedure for acid fast staining that will remain the same only different is here primary stain is carbolfistin the counter stain is either methylene blue or malachite green and here moderant is heating so we have to heat 
after primary staying up to 5 to 10 minutes that will act as a moderant and that will improve the staining efficiency so this is in brief about the procedure of acid fast staining okay now once you will perform the acid fast staining and you will observe organism organism will take the red stain because this carbol fuchsin is red color and negative organism will take the blue color if we are using the methylene blue now this is in brief about acid fast staining but there is one word mzn so you have to find out as a part of your assignment what it means how the procedure of mzn is different from zn stain now moving to the last portion okay this is just comparison that you have to you should know that gram positive will take the violet color whereas gram negative will take the pink color that is a principal and counter stain color respectively whereas in acid fast the positive organism will take the red color and non acid fast organism will take the blue color or that depends on the counter stain you had used now <clears throat> moving to the last uh, portion of our class that is special stain so there are some uh, organelles in bacteria they require some special treatment for example if you want to observe the spores spores are generally produced during the adverse condition and that required some special treatment heat treatment to get penetration to improve that penetration and to get the stain similarly flagella that required some mordant that will because they are very thin and very difficult to observe so we have to give some pr primary treatment mm -hmm. that will swollen up and that will take uh, that will stain the flagella and similarly capsule that also requires some special staining method so that we can observe whether bacteria are capsulated or non-capsulated so this photograph showing the capsule around the bacteria and this one you can see this dot green dot they are the spores so now what you have to remember in this special staining that you should remember the name of that particular stain for example when we are going for spore staining then spores contain special material that is known as dp cholinic acid that gives or that is a characteristic of cell wall of spores okay and generally the procedure is known as sefer fulton method and the cell <coughs> sefer fulton method and that will take the bluish green color the next that is flagella the procedure to stain the flagella that is known as lipson method and the procedure to stain the capsule that is known as his copper sulfate method or lamb method you should find out the full form of lamb method and where it is used so now capsule when we are talking of capsule you should remember that capsule of most bacteria are polysaccharide in nature but the exception is bacillus anthracis that cause the anthrax and that is polypeptide in nature so this you have to remember that polypeptide that is the only characteristic of capsule of bacillus anthracis and this may ask in your theory exam too now moving to the second last slide uh, these are the important staining method you will encounter during your entire microbiology class of uh, uh, our second year but beside this one you can also listen uh, you, you may also listen about lisman stain and field stain Generally, these are the stain classified under simple stain or you can generally routinely use this stain to stain the blood to observe the hemoprotogens. And generally, this uh, procedures, the principle will be covered in pathology class. So I am not touching in detail about this one. Now, before uh, concluding this one, there are some points you have to ponder and you have to answer this as a part of your assignment, like which staining method does not require separate fixing step. What do you mean by moderant? What do you understand by gram variable pattern and modified ZN stain? And if you have still any query, you can divert me on my mobile number and my email ID. Thank you everyone for listening me and for uh, giving this opportunity to share these slides. Thanks everyone.